and welcome to Healthy Living. I'm honored today to be talking to Dr. Cal Sharp. Thank you so much. Hey, he is an interventional cardiologist and someone I've known for many years now, and it's great to see you. Thanks for it's been me. interesting for me catching up with you because right. you now have two teenage boys. <laughs> I do, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you look pretty sane. <laughs> Because I'm working. <laughs> yeah, exactly. oh, yeah, working is a good thing, right? Right, right. Talk to us a little bit for the few people who may not really understand what an interventional cardiologist does. What right. is your role? So, uh, as a cardiologist, uh, certainly trained in general cardiology, taking care of uh, uh, general cardiac care, risk factors, uh, and, and you and went heart to disease. MUSC. I did. I uh, I did my uh, both cardiology and interventional training at the medical university in Charleston. So uh, I've been practicing now for. 20 years Have uh, you here really? locally. Yep, that's right. And Jeez. so, uh, but as an interventional cardiologist, uh, uh, specifically trained also in uh, invasive evaluation of blood vessels, coronary artery disease, uh, catheterizations, as well as the ability to fix uh, those blood vessels uh, with uh, balloons, stents, angioplasties, taking care of uh, obstructive coronary artery disease, heart attacks, uh, uh, both stable as well as uh, unstable uh, cardiac disease. So talk me through the process. Um, do I start with my primary care doc and then come to you? Sure. I guess because I grew up with a cardiologist sure. as a dad, my natural instinct is go directly to go the, directly to the cardio. Right. Well, uh, typically, uh, typically patients are well established with their primary care physicians, uh, okay. and as they, as uh, you know, through lifestyle modification, through uh, assessing their the primary care physician assesses their risk factors uh, and uh, you know, if they have extensive risk factors or they okay. they have any uh, unstable symptoms sometimes they'll be referred to a cardiologist for further assistance and evaluation uh, certainly if there are uh, symptoms of uh, heart disease or, or limitations sometimes patients uh, may come to the emergency room and be referred out of an emergency room or an urgent care or or just make an appointment directly with a, a cardiologist to just get plugged in and be evaluated and follow, follow Maybe up. Maybe we should talk about some heart basics. Right. Can you talk to us a little bit about the heart in general? And um, I, here's what I know. It's <laughs> okay. kind of like a horse. One end kicks right. and one end bites. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> Let's talk about the heart. Understood. It's a muscle. <laughs> it is. Well, I, I, I brought yeah, a muscle. See. I brought, a, I brought a uh, model. Right. Uh, and so uh, it's, it's sort of fascinating and uh, it's sort of what I do. But, yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> So the heart is a muscle. It's a, uh, a pumping uh, a muscle. Uh, sits within the chest, and uh, and so it consists of uh, pumping chambers okay. uh, called the ventricles, and it consists of collecting chambers called the uh, the atrium, and um, so uh, it pumps oxygenated blood to to the body, and uh, it and then it uh, returns uh, blood back uh, from the body and pumps it to the lungs. So, so it's sort of a systemic so uh, circulation. So as a muscle, right? Can I keep my heart healthy with <laughs> some? choices right. that I make completely so uh, you know as a muscle that uh, that that requires fuel uh, okay. uh, oxygen as, as any other organ in your body requires oxygen and blood and and so there are blood vessels to the heart muscle uh, and those are what the coronary arteries are uh, the blood vessels or fuel lines to the to the pump okay and uh, and the muscle uh, blood flows in and out of the uh, 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 muscle through valves uh, across valves and, and out valves and and so, yes, you can uh, keep your heart uh, 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 strong and healthy by exercise, primarily. Okay. Uh, uh, exercise may not make the muscle stronger, but what it does is helps the rest of the body work so efficiently that the, the heart muscle can therefore work more efficiently. Talk to me about exercise, because I think for many of us, exercise is the E word, right? It's, it's, right. Well, it's intimidating, <laughs> right, right. especially if I've been um, not so prone to doing it for right. years. Right. So exercise, uh, you know, I, I always just encourage the patient to maintain some component of, I call it, use the words lifestyle modification. Okay. Just move. Just, just move. Uh -huh. uh, it, it doesn't have to be uh, with a personal trainer and a new pair of Nikes, but okay. uh, uh, but just doing little things as far as just taking a walk, uh, uh, preferably 30, uh, maybe 45 minutes, okay. preferably five, maybe uh, every day of the week. Mm -hmm. uh, just uh, moderate intensity, uh, your pace, uh, not not your neighbor's pace okay. or your son's pace or uh, your grandchildren's pace, but uh, just whatever degree of activity you feel comfortable in, in maintaining as a start. And then what about fueling my body with, right. with 
Well, uh, you know, certainly uh, healthy eating habits, uh, okay. watching portion control, calories, keeping your weight controlled, uh, uh, watching your salt intake. These are important aspects Why to help. Salt? Well, those are important aspects in helping uh, uh, monitor risk or maintaining risk factor therapy, particularly okay. patients with uh, hypertension uh, or diabetes. Uh, uh, keeping your weight controlled, calories helps control blood pressure uh, and, uh, and and diabetes and, and cholesterol. Dr. Sharp, um, share with me where the predisposition to heart disease fits into all this. Is there a genetic component, right. or or what? What are the reasons that people have right. um, heart disease or develop it? So in the concept of the generalization of heart disease, what we typically sometimes refer to as coronary artery disease or, or plaque that builds up within the walls and the blood vessels. Which is what? Well, the blood vessels are the fuel lines to the okay. heart muscle. And so, uh, and so a blood vessel is this, a tubular uh, conduit that supplies blood, uh, okay. but it's a, a, a living structure with cells and, and cell membranes. And, and so those, um, uh, those vessels can become damaged over time and age, and, mm -hmm. uh, but some things that can uh, precipitate coronary artery disease or increase one's risk for development of atherosclerosis, certainly there's the genetic factors, okay. uh, <clears throat> but, and we can't do anything about that. Right. So that's a, a non-modifiable non risk factor. Okay. All that. So, uh, you know, but the genetics uh, certainly is a predisposition to uh, cardiovascular disease. And then other uh, medical risk factors include uh, um, you know, hypertension, high cholesterol, and diabetes. Okay. And, and then the most modifiable risk factor one one has is tobacco use. And so that's probably the, the most important one to eliminate, that one could eliminate immediately is uh, uh, tobacco abuse. Uh, well, so, we're talking about going on a tangent here because that's right. what we can do, right? Right, right. Um, young, I work with a lot of young people and I see a lot of, um, not cigarette smoking, but a lot of vaping right. and, you know, that kind of thing. Well, these are still irritants. Uh, they're still, uh, you know, uh, nicotine, okay. uh, um, you know, can increase blood pressure, heart rate, and, and these are all just stressors. Okay, so, so it's still just a risk factor. It's still just a risk factor. Okay. It's just a, a modifiable lifestyle modification change that, that if, if you don't do it, don't start, and if okay. you can stop, it's best to stop. All right, um, let's talk a little bit about um, when when I should start seeing a cardiologist or when I should right. start having physicals. And is heart disease something that is more prevalent as we age? Well, so cardiovascular disease, uh, like I mentioned, is just it's it's a chronic condition. Okay. And so, uh, you know, with risk factors, um, uh, with uh, genetic history, following up with your primary care physician, getting your cholesterols checked at least okay. once a year, having your blood pressures checked when you see the physician, getting blood work drawn, uh, maintaining healthy lifestyle habits, exercise, and then just being mindful of symptoms. But uh, but to your question, cardiovascular disease is a chronic condition of plaque. And plaque, okay. plaque is essentially within the wall of the blood vessel. It's cholesterol that uh, deposits within the okay. wall of the blood vessel, and then there's a, a chronic, you know, back and forth between plaque deposition and inflammation, uh, subsequent healing, and plaque stabilization. And so there's there's a give and take as you go through life, and and uh, if the plaque deposition overwhelms the plaque stabilization, then then that, that, that <laughs> vessel can then become obstructed. Okay. And so it's when it becomes obstructive or the fuel line becomes narrowed that the supply demand mismatch can, can begin to experience symptoms. Yeah, and I wanna talk um, about symptoms and then I wanna talk about some um, interventions. I think we're probably about ready to take a quick break. We will come right back and we're gonna talk about those things. Again, sure. we're with Dr. Kalshar. Thank you.